As we continue our discussion with DNA, let's recap what we know so far. We've already established why DNA is the genetic material, and that was through looking at the experiments done by people like Griffith, McLeod, Avery, and also Hers Hershey and Chase. So that made us 100% uh, sure that DNA is our genetic material through those ingenious experiments. Moving forward, we've also established the structure of DNA. We know that it's based off of mostly the Watson and Crick model, and of course Watson and Crick are the known discoverers of DNA, but it's important to realize they also had people that helped them, and we proved why the Watson and Crick model is so great. Now that we've established the structure and the origin of DNA in the sense that we know that it's genetic material, we can finally talk about one of the most confusing topics about DNA, which is DNA replication. And there's going to be about four flowcharts to being devoted to DNA replication since it's such a large topic. This first one will be called DNA Replication 1. In DNA Replication 1, we're going to be looking at three proposed mechanisms. So let me write that down. Three proposed mechanisms for DNA replication. So there's three proposed mechanisms, we'll say for DNA rep, just to abbreviate it. So what I mean by this is that there were, just like when we were figuring out whether or not DNA is the genetic material, what's a protein or DNA, there were also sort of guesses as to how DNA replicates. But based off of Watson and Crick's model, we were able to figure out the correct proposal for DNA replication. Let's go through all three. The first one that we're going to go through is called the conservative model. That's the actual name. It's called the conservative model, and that is for DNA replication. In this model, I'm going to define it as the following. The parent DNA molecule, okay? Because what we have to remember right now is that we're going to have a parent DNA molecule, much like this, very basic ladder structure that I'm drawing here, that we need to replicate. We need to turn this, and we need to make another one of these. So we have to go from this to, you know, just an exact copy somehow, some way. But how does this happen? What is the relationship? What allows this to copy itself so that now we end up with not one, but two total DNA molecules? This is going to be considered our parent DNA on the top. Always imagine the parent DNA as a basic red ladder that we're going to be drawing. The parent DNA uh, molecule, let's say, remains intact, meaning that it doesn't change at all. It remains intact, and you know how we're supposed to replicate it somehow. We're supposed to make another DNA molecule out of it. Well, this is actually... Um, not going to be the right way for this conserved model. So we're going to erase that and we're going to figure out that it remains intact and second DNA molecule, the one that we're trying to make out of this replication process, second DNA molecule is constructed is constructed as, and this is the key here, entirely entirely new DNA strand. So, what do we mean by this? Very basically, I think you can do this by a very basic drawing. We can state that the conservative model says this. I have a parent molecule of DNA. I'm going to do the most rudimentary structure of DNA possible. A ladder-like material. This is our sugar phosphate backbone. These are nitrogenous bases in the middle. There's the other sugar phosphate backbone. Two strands combined together via those hydrogen bonds. So, I have this parent DNA molecule. I'm going to write that down. This is my, let me rewrite that, this is my parent DNA, and what does my definition state? The second DNA molecule is constructed as entirely new DNA strand. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually utilize the use of colors, and I'm going to make this next parent, this next daughter DNA molecule, let's say, completely different. This is how conservative model replication is. This is going to be our, we'll say, new DNA. What is this difference? This difference means that it's based off of the fact that we have conserved something. This parent DNA was completely conserved. That's why it's called the conservative model. It didn't change at all. Completely conserved. And we got a totally new, entirely new DNA strand off of this. So this was our replication process. Replication that gave us a totally new DNA strand that was um, complete, leaving the parent DNA molecule absolutely the same as it was before. 
So this seems like it makes sense, right? And many people believe that this was the correct model of DNA replication going from parent to daughter, but it's a little bit more complex than this. So some people believed or used to believe that it was a very complex process known as the dispersive model. And this is going to make a lot more sense. This seems intuitive. It seems like this is the correct way, but when we look at the dispersive model, we're going to be seeing a difference that helps us realize that this is probably not the right way as well. It isn't. So in this dispersive model, I like to think of it as the exact opposite of our conservative model. What we're going to have is something very interesting. Each of the two new DNA strands, because remember, we've made how many DNA strands in this replication process? One strand, two strands, right? So it's a second DNA molecule, I could even say, and second DNA strands are constructed as entirely new DNA strands. We should put new strands. Um, each of the two new DNA strands is, this is interesting, mix of old and new. It's a mix of old and new DNA. So how can I draw this? I can very simply draw this as the following. What we're going to have is a, an original parent molecule such as this, okay, this is our parent DNA molecule, that's going to replicate itself, but what's going to happen in this replication process is something very kind of weird, I think at least, is that we're going to have a piece of it that's red, then a piece of it that's blue, and then another piece of it that's red, and then in the middle we're going to have some blue here, maybe some blue here, and some red here, some red here, and then we're going to connect it to something that's a total mixture once again, such as this. See how much I'm mixing everything right now? I end up with a very dispersed molecule, a molecule that's a mix of old and new, and that's exactly what happened, in, what, what proposedly happens in the dispersive model. So this is our new DNA, we can label it. Again, the new DNA is a mix of old and new. So I'm going to tell you right now that this is the wrong model. This is the wrong model. And we're going to see why because we're going to look at the correct model, which is the semi-conservative model. Semi-conservative model. So this is the correct model. So I would star it. I would absolutely understand the semi-conservative model. It states the following. Each of the two new DNA strands, each of the two new, let's just say, not each of, but the two new DNA strands um, are composed of, composed of the following. One new strand and then also we're going to have one parent strand. This is the idea of being semi-conservative. Having the conservation of our parent strand, but also having something different, semi, meaning almost exactly the same as the parent, but something new. We can state that this is the semi and the semi-conservative, having the new strand, and then this is the conserved. This is the conserved portion of our semi-conservative model. And we can draw this out very simply as the following. What we have to actually do now, and you know what, I'm actually going to write each of, because it actually makes sense when we do the drawing, sorry about that. Each of the two new DNA strands are composed of one new strand, one parent strand. So what's going to happen is I have a DNA molecule such as this, right? This is my parent DNA. Very simple. And what's going to happen to this parent DNA molecule is that it's going to literally open up at the middle and end up in two semi-conserved DNA strands in the following format. What I'm going to show you is the following. This is our semi-conserved model. And then I'm going to draw our new portion to this DNA strand, which will look something like this. That's our new portion. I'm going to draw another new portion right here, and then close it up. So, oh, that was really poorly done. Let me try that again. There we go. Okay, so we have two new ladders, okay? We had the same situation in these over here. 
Over here we had two new molecules at the end as the end result. We have two molecules, well actually we have one molecule in this situation because it's dispersive. In this situation we have two totally new DNA strands, let's imagine. Here we have just one new DNA strand but with a dispersed outlook. And over here we have the splitting of the parent strand so that one parent strand remains and we can label this parent strand as the conserved because it's blue, right? And then we have the blue strand, which is the one part new. This is our new strand. And this is the correct model for DNA replication. What we, what we understand from the Watson and Crick model specifically is that he, or, or they, Watson and Crick stated the following. And I don't have much room on the bottom here, so I'm just going to extend our knowledge over here and just conclude on the following. The Watson and Crick model states the following. Number one, during DNA replication, two parent strands separate. So two parent strands separate. And once they've separated, they're going to be, just like how I initially drew them, they're going to be half and half, half red, half red, on two separate sides. And that's going to allow that to serve as, and this is a key word right here, template. Each strand is now a template. Each strand is equal to a template for complementary strand. Oh, I'm going to squeeze that in. Complementary strand. And we're going to see this in much greater detail as we move forward with our DNA replication. But I think the most important thing to take away from DNA replication one are, of course, the three proposed mechanisms. Understand the conservative model. It just creates a completely new DNA molecule that's completely sort of a... Um, elaboration on the parent DNA molecule. Um, there's a dispersive model that's a complete mix. It's dispersed. Both of these are wrong, but the correct model, based off of what Watson and Crick's model states, is that there's a semi-conservative model to replication in which each of the two new strands may have one new strand and one parent strand. This is going to split apart literally in half, just like we did at the very first part of this uh, splitting, and we're going to end up with two strands that are semi-conserved. That concludes DNA replication one.